What's up guys, it's King of House here. I've been meaning to bring you a video for a while, but I'm having some trouble actually getting the damn things to render properly. Now I record with the Ava Media Game Capture HD. Now thank you to Senzik for suggesting this to me. It makes recording nice and easy. My problem has actually been with the rendering. Now, I started off with Windows Movie Maker, and the resolution was just terrible. I put a couple of videos up, but took them straight down again. I can't really see the point in uploading content if it's, you know, barely visible to people. So, uh, took those down. Then I went to Sony Movies HD, which is what Senzik actually, Senzik actually uses. Put my teeth back in. And that seemed to work okay, but for some reason, when I render the videos, it was almost like a strobe effect going on. They'd be nice and bright, and then they'd go pitch black, and they'd be nice and bright, and go pitch black. So I've actually moved on to Sony Vegas. I uh, tried to use 11, but it didn't work very well. So, uh, or it didn't work at all, I should say, because it doesn't work on a Windows XP machine. And then I've moved to Sony Vegas 9. Now, before I continue, you'll note here I'm about to pop a barrel, uh, pop a bullet in a barrel. There's a good reason for that. Give it a few seconds. Bang! There we go. Free kill. So I'll come back to that later. But anyway, so I'm using Sony Vegas 9. Uh, a few, <laughs> a few videos again. Seemed to be okay when I when I was previewing them, but they just didn't look very good. The first couple the colors were off. Then I tried some color corrections, and it, you know, if you saw my last video before I took it down, it was all yellow. Uh, yeah. So anyway, those of you that know, know Coldplay, I'm sorry. I've just butchered um, such a great song. But uh, anyway, back to the commentary. The colors they were a problem. Uh, then I got the colors sorted, and then the sound became an issue. I think now I've finally sorted everything out. Now my video should now be playing in full screen, in widescreen, be good to look at and they should sound okay. I've got my fingers crossed because this is the first video I'm actually uploading which I think ticks all the boxes. If it works I will start pumping out more content. Now I've got a few things planned and I'll come back to that. Just quickly the gameplay. You're watching a game of 4v4 demolition on hard hat team we're playing are pretty terrible if I'm honest. The only reason I'm uploading this one is it kind of sums up my playstyle. Super aggressive, always in the enemy spawn, trying to do as much damage as I can, which means my teammates can kind of, it makes their lives easier in terms of, or makes their lives easier, Jesus I'm supposed to be British, makes their lives easier and they can get their jobs done better if everyone's dead to be quite honest. So I'm running the PP90M1 with rapid fire and a silencer and my Kimbo FMG9s as my secondary weapons. This, yes, this class is hugely overpowered, but I'm playing on an American host, and as you can probably tell, I'm not American. So I'm on a two bar and Treyarch, uh, Treyarch? Infinity Ward tried to build in lag compensation to this game. This is my kind of lag compensation. A rapidly, uh, a massively overpowered rapid fire submachine gun, which up close it's pretty devastating. Yes, if you run into a guy with a four bar and a striker, you know, he's going to win most of the time. But this this is the job for me when I'm on a two bar. Hopefully I'll start recording some gameplay on a four bar connection. And you can see I, I'm happy to mess around with different weapons. You know, I've used all the different shotguns. I don't really use assault rifles or LMGs because I just, it's just too slow for me. I like running around. If I'm not using an LMG or a shotgun, my favourite being the Spaz 12 just because it was a beast in Modern Warfare 2. I'll be running the L118 or MSR sniper rifles. I'm all about the bolt action and I'm really pleased to say that Infinity Ward have actually decided to reward players for using bolt action snipers over semi-autos in this game. If you don't know, if you pick up the MSR or the L118 you actually run a little bit faster than people who are using say the Barrett or the, um, the RS ASS. <laughs> which is ridiculous quite frankly now this is where this video goes wrong I'm pretty close to my Moab and this is my first mistake I kill this guy and then instead of waiting until my screen is clear again I rush back out here and boom 23 kills I blow myself up with a car bomb unbelievable uh, a few seconds earlier I, I shot half a clip into that into that uh, burning truck I, I, I'm the reason it's burning don't know what I was doing there. I knew I was like two or one kills away from the uh, the Moab, and I got excited and just rushed in there, and I paid the penalty by blowing myself up. I hope you found that entertaining. That's pretty much it for the gameplay. You know, it's kind of a rush game of demolition against four really bad players with an overpowered class. Draw what conclusions you so you see as fit from that. 
Anyway, now the second half of this game, um, well, the second part of this game, we actually let these guys win this round so we can, you know, get an extra, um, some extra time with them because they were fun. Uh, here's me doing my thing, rushing into the enemy spawn, trying to get that first blood. It doesn't actually happen this game, but, you know, or this, this round, but, um, you know, I've <laughs> I get an early kill, that's safe to say. Now, so, what's to come of my channel? Well, assuming I have the correction, uh, the color correction settings and the sound settings and everything else sorted, there are three series I'm planning. The first one actually relates to a game called Duke Nukem 3D. I was looking for something the other day, completely unrelated to this, and actually found a website I had in, I think, 1997. It was really basic. I'm not going to give you the link because it was terrible. And I had to find it on the Wayback Machine because it was doesn't actually exist anymore but the cache was there and for some reason I managed to access a couple of files on there. Now those files were the old school Duke Nukem 3D equivalent of theatre mode. And basically I have three games of Duke Nukem. I, can't, I have no idea what they're like at the moment because I haven't actually managed to download a working copy of Duke Nukem 3D. You need a copy of Duke Nukem 3D to watch the demo files. If I can get them to work I think for old time's sake, and some of the old school first person shooter players out there, I think they'll appreciate the Duke Nukem games. Um, some of you might not like it, but I think I think it'll be quite entertaining. You, it'll give you an understanding as why I play like I do. Duke Nukem, in short, was a fast paced, frantic first person shooter. There were steroids, there were jetpacks, RPGs, shotguns, chain guns, freeze rays, shrink rays, you name it. The game was hugely enjoyable, and it, the whole point of that game was to run around super quickly, and dominate the weapons and keep your opponent or opponents in some cases it was mainly a 1v1 game because back then connections just couldn't support you know more than one player very well without huge amounts of lag and the idea was to just dominate the map so you know my first and only other first person shooter aside from Call of Duty was Duke Nukem and that is kind of why I play like I do I run around I don't stop moving there is a statistic somewhere in the accolades of Modern Warfare 3 which a friend of mine pointed out Jaeger Bomb give him credit who it actually shows that out of all the people on our friends list, I run around the most. I have by far and away the most m miles travelled. Yes, I'm probably the least strategic player out of the guys I know, but, you know, it's what I find enjoyable, and I hope it's enjoyable to watch. You let me know. If you disagree, well, you probably don't want to subscribe to me. I'm not the sort of guy who's going to be teaching you head glitch spots. Well, I might do, but you won't see me standing there very long. Anyway, so the Duke Nukem series, I hope that will be fun and enjoyable. If it's not, you know, you just don't have to watch the videos. Next thing is the road to the multi Moab. I mentioned Jaeger Bomb with him and the Sensic 21. I'll pop a link to his channel in the description. I'm looking at doing a little series along the lines of Road to Commander. Basically, we're going to spend either a Saturday or a Sunday running through, you know, some team tactical or 6v6 games, and we're going to try and get more than one Moab. Either a Moab each, ideally three. Or maybe someone get two Moabs. Now, Jaeger, you give that guy a wooden spoon, he'll go out and get a Moab. He has something like 30 now. He has Moabs with, like, L86 thermals. I mean, that's just, that's just ridiculous, to be quite honest. He has them with the FMGs only. Strikers. I think he might even have them with the Spaz 12. I mean, the guy... The guy's a beast. He got 23 kills in the game I was playing with him with a sniper rifle and got panic knifed, you know, one off a Moab. I think it could be entertaining. If we get one, I think it will be really impressive for two reasons. One, there's not actually that many kills to go around in these games. You know, if you're getting more than one Moab in a team, that takes a lot of doing. You have to properly crush the opposition. And just, just a word of warning, if you're looking for close gameplays, that's not going to happen. Well, it might, you know, it, you might see some close gameplays in the series, because I'm just going to run the recording all day with live commentaries from start to finish, and then end as soon as we get this double Moab, or triple Moab if we can. But, you know, the... We're not going to get these double mobs against good players. We're going to get them against players like this that literally spawn in back into a corner and, and you know, lay a claim or down and hide. Good players do not give away multiple mobs in the game. Thus far, since Modern Warfare 3 has come out, and I have, I think, two days playtime, no, seven days playtime, something frankly ridiculous, um, not once have we been on the receiving end of a Moab. Because we see a guy going for a Moab, we hunt him down, and we work as a team to stop him. You know, we, we've we come close. We've had a guy who gets, got 22 kills against us on, I think, C-Town. And uh, I think it was um, I think it was Dr. Slow. 
Um, Dr. Slow, if you're watching, stick it in the comments. I think it was you who actually got the guy on 23 kills and he went livid, as you know, I did when I got exploded by my own car bomb in this game. So, that's it, Duke Nukem, the road to the multi-mob, and then I'm looking at doing a team call-out series. As you can probably tell, I play with the same sort of guys over and over again. We, I think we play pretty well together. Um, there's about eight of us who on and off will, will drop in and out of sessions. You know, I play with about 30 people all together, but you know, it's the same crew that I tend to play with more often, well, you know, regularly. So, now I'm gonna try and do these with a bit of a twist. There are already people who've done call-out videos that are already, and Call of Duty Elite subscribers, nice one King, flashing yourself there. Call of Duty Elite subscribers actually have access to tutorials um, in Elite. Now, I don't know what they're like because I'm not an Elite member. I couldn't see the benefit in it, especially on PS3 when you know you don't get the map packs early anyway. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to do the first thing. The, these videos will be in three stages. The first part will be an overlay of the map. Now, Jaeger Bomb and one of his friends, Menchaka. I'm sorry if I've pronounced that wrong, but um, Jaeger Bomb and Menchaka have, have provided some map overlays with annotations on there, which I'm going to throw up. Just so people have some kind of a reference point, feel free to kind of use them, download them, do whatever you want to do with them. It'll give you an overlay, of, an overview of the maps, so you can see all the callouts in one go. Then I'm going to quickly run around the maps in part two, and you know, sort of say exactly what's going on. So, for example, hut, flag pipe, B dom, etc., etc. Really quickly, just go around the map. And here you see me playing the objective, defusing the bomb, and then am I planting? Defuse? Ah, oh, I'm planting. Yeah, get my eyes tested, and. Uh, from, and then in part three, I'm actually going to pair the, well, filter in or edit in, whatever you want to call it, actual gameplay from the map I've been, I've shown you the overlay and done the quick walk around for. And I'm hoping the combination of the overlay, the quick walkthrough and the live commentary as it'll be, it'll be team commentary with either four or six people. I hope that kind of helps you learn the call outs really quickly. Now the call outs are really important. If you've got a team of guys, or even random guys communicating with one another, it makes life so much easier. Now I managed to jump out of the way, that guy's uh, Martin Gray. Just quickly, death streaks. What? I mean, I just don't get it. Why? It's socialism gone mad. This is a game, you know, you don't need to make the playing field level. If someone sucks, let them suck. I know it's all about sales and stuff like that, but just, just stop it. Stop it. Do not put death streaks in these games, it annoys the hell out of me. That pretty much brings this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed the commentary and I hope you're looking forward to the Duke Nukem, Road to the multi Mob, and Team Callout series. Any questions, comments, particularly about the render settings, please leave something, well, please leave me a comment below. It, you know, it does help me. So until next time, take care.